After a long absence, Archetype Archive is finally returning in order to cover speed characters. And so, where do we start with these guys? Well, I've had a lot of requests for ninjas, and don't hurt me for this, but two of fighting games' most iconic ninjas fit this archetype, Strider and Chip. There are a few very popular ninjas though, like Ibuki and Scorpion, who don't fit this archetype, so I'm hesitant to refer to these guys as ninjas. Plus, there's characters like Valkenhayn, Talkaka, and Omen who are very much not ninjas but they embody the speed archetype. So why do these guys wind up speed characters and not rush down? Well, that all comes down to two words. What's blocking? Rushdown characters thrive in neutral situations, and so blocking enemy attacks isn't bad for them, because not only does blocking tend to reset back to neutral, but their jabs will lead to good knockdowns and advantage situations if they do mash out of a block strength. But for speed characters, their mash out damage is abysmal, and they have to take a serious risk that can be counter mashed into a full combo to steal their turn during a block strength. Plus, their gap closing is markedly unsafe compared to a rushdown character, but what they do have is theoretically infinite momentum. Block strings have seen a lot of scrutiny on this channel. These guys are effectively nothing but block strength, so I have to get into some proper theory here. To help explain this archetype, I'm going to divide block string pressure into three sub techniques that will effectively sum out how to both formulate your game plan as and against these guys. Baiting, options, and safety. Baiting is the primary way that these guys open you up. I'm sorry to tell some of you grappler players this, but no, their high-low mix isn't the strongest part of these guys' kits whatsoever. But because of how options work, basically after any given attack, there's only certain things you can cancel those attacks into, and only some of those things will actually connect with the opponent. And these things will be different on hit, on block, on barrier block, on parry, on perfect guard, etc. Speed characters are banking that this set of differences will swing things in their favour though, and to play them well you're going to have to get familiar with their pressure reset option, what that is, and when it's actually possible to do. For example, when playing as Chip, this would be Alpha Blade. You come up cross up through the opponent, and you should be able to restart your block turn behind them if they block correctly, and if they don't block then you get to explode them with damage and combo. But the start up of this pressure reset move is extremely fragile to interruption, so you have to mix up when you actually do it, after which attacks you do it, and after making them block for how long, etc. The fragility of speed characters come from the fact that these resets are hard to react to, but paradoxically very easy to predict, and you really do not want these moves to get interrupted. So that's where baiting comes into play. Some of your moves have built-in delay in order to catch people mashing and attempting to interrupt your pressure, plus your insanely high movement speed and overall agility make fainting and swaying extremely easy. And instant overhead combos are exceedingly easy both to formulate and perform as these characters. The world is your oyster for what you choose to do, and for that you need this kind of pressure web or flow chart to be in your head and then severely vary what options you pick and when constantly throughout the match, in order to make sure the enemy never gets a good feel for your play patterns. And that is why safety comes last here for speed characters. It's actually much harder for a speed character than most other archetypes to play safe, because you're only ever going to be safe for a few frames at a time, and your strings are really really fragile to interruption, and will often leave you negative. So you're seeking to flow like water and mix things up just enough to prevent you getting caught out and destroyed, which is why you might paradoxically constantly see these guys in S tier without them actually getting results and winning any tournaments. On paper, their mix ups are so incredibly potent that their low damage doesn't matter, but in reality, when you pick one of these guys, you're betting that you can make 5 correct guesses while your opponent only has to make 2, and guessing is the hardest part of fighting games because at the end of the day, you're human, and it feels normal to do something like 1-2-3 overhead, 1-2 low. Some rhythms are just ingrained in us, and it's really really hard to unlearn these things. Pros take these facts into their advantage, but it really is the most expert of expert techniques. Within the scope of this video, I can't really teach you to improve at being unreadable in fighting games, but for you, it's going to take a lot of practice and discipline. To somewhat benefit this arrhythmic style of play, You'll very often see these characters just entirely forgo long combos throughout the match unless they're guaranteed to be round enders, 
and instead, in mid round, they're going to look for restands or very quick knockdowns that lead to ambiguous, hard to read situations. Or at least they put themselves in an advantage state over the opponent in neutral. Like I said earlier on in the video, these guys are effectively all block strength, so you're hoping to infinitely vortex your opponent to death. To that end, quick, simple looping scenarios where your opponent has to immediately guess on wake up will very swiftly bring wins your way. So that can be a kind of unique benefit that these guys get that you don't often see from other archetypes, besides maybe the grappler. That it's much stronger for them to just play suboptimally and not always fish for their highest possible damage combos and instead just use their meter for roman cancels over supers. After all, anytime you RC is effectively another free unseeable 50-50 and that can mean another combo or just an outright round win. But in order to round off how these guys play, we gotta talk about trying to win neutral as them. You probably noticed these guys have really really good angles of approach and that's because of the name of the game for the speed character is Interception. They don't really have good neutral skipping abilities, those being things like force interaction and put the situation in your favour automatically. In fact, speed characters are actually somewhat honest in that regard. But Interception is the key word for these guys. You're going to have to use weird angles in order to low crush attacks, dash out the way of pokes and then use your speed to whiff punish, or attempt to catch out opponents back dashes and air dashes. Your mid screen knockdown pressure is formulated pretty generically, your anti airs are good and your corner pressure is obscene. It's just about finding your first hit and then using good corner carry to keep up that momentum and put your opponent in a bad situation. Again, thankfully, that's kind of the easy part of playing these guys, but it's so unique a skill that it winds up not being very transferable to or from other archetypes. So you're going to have to learn to treat yourself like a fighter jet and just swoop in on openings in order to start your game plan. Much like the title suggests, the name of the game for these guys is entirely all about speed. To play against these guys though, all you have to do is exercise a little focus and some discipline. I know that you really want to get your game plan started, but by their nature these players are going to approach you. They have to. Their ranged options are really just covers for their approach if they even have any at all. So just look for the biggest openings in their block strings like rekas or strings that need to use a preset safe ender and do things like reversal through their pressure extenders and then that will build you up a lot of meter just while you're defending against these guys properly. And that can really really turn the tide quickly, in modern fighting games especially. And you should be very wary of their overheads. These are their scariest combo starters for these guys and they come out outrageously fast. Meanwhile meterless, their lows are often locked behind recos and they can be fuzzy guardable when you know that they're coming. Or they just generally are kind of weak and they can only combo out of them via meter dumps. If you choose to barrier block though, that can also make their overheads a lot more visible and reactable because of the gap closing that winds up being involved in them. And since air to air combat is difficult to implement and not a concern in most games, air throws can be really easy to land on speed characters and it will throw them off their rhythm hard. If you steal the momentum from them, they'll often just crumble entirely under the pressure and suffer an extremely swift death due to their low health bars and simple reversal option. This is a first on the main channel, but hey, I'm also a VTuber. I, you might catch me streaming with my models sometimes on Twitch, which you can find in the link down below. As you might have spotted, besides me is a tier list that I want to start doing for all the archetypes I cover on Archetype Archive. If this particular segment's received well, I'll put together a much more rambly and freeform video where I'm going to cover all the other 10 archetypes that I've covered so far in the series, and discuss where I'd place them on the list and why. You can probably also see that the x-axis here is theoretical versus practical top tiers. Unfortunately I forgot to use those words specifically at the time, but in my what makes a top tier video, which you can click on the screen right now, probably up here, I cover this general idea with the example of Luke and Ken in Street Fighter, and talk about how to discern if a character or archetype is one or the other, and how archetype strength can even be determined in the first place. For the sake of this, on this list I've laid out all 11 archetypes I've covered so far on the screen using Blaze Blue characters, both to introduce some of you to the world of Blaze Blue, how cool and well rounded its roster is, and since you can see, most of these archetypes actually have two or more representatives within this game that have significant differences between them. 
but also because Street Fighter doesn't really have an item for a character, and Guilty Gear just isn't my cup of tea by comparison. Although, theoretically, Accent Core could be ranked here just as easily. If you don't know any of these characters, don't worry, for now I'm just going to be talking about the archetypes, and not them specifically. But today, we're just going to rank two archetypes in particular, today's video's archetype and the next video's archetype. So for a nice preview, be sure to stick around till the segment ends. Oh, and since there's not going to be an outro today, if you want to support me, something as simple as commenting how awful my placements here are, or subscribing and liking the video really really does help. And financially, you can support me via Patreon or YouTube membership, which is all just one click away in the description box under the video. So, to finally get to the speed character, here we have Valkenhayn and Taukaka. Technically we have Bang here as well, this guy. He's a one-shot as well as a speed character, so we're going to be counting him as a one-shot and we'll maybe talk about that some other time. But I think that speed characters can probably go right up here, the far top left, mostly for reasons that we've already covered. Their momentum is extremely strong, so it's not hard for them to gap close at the round start and then if all of their guesses go well, they never have to separate from the opposing character and you're just going to get blown up from the start to finish of any given round. They have theoretically endless, very difficult mix-ups for you to respond to, but within a real game, sometimes when you're making a 4-way guess, high, low, strike, throw, you're just going to pick the right one, and the instant that you've done that, it's just as easy for you to turn the momentum on them and win the round because of the character's archetype's poor defense. So, how about the next video's archetype? Well, you've probably noticed that there are these two oddly placed femme fatales at the bottom of the screen. This is Tsubaki, and this is Celica. For this video's purpose, as I'm sure absolutely none of you would have guessed from those characters, even those familiar with Blaze Blue, the next video is going to be the Footsies character. While that might sound insane to call these characters that in particular, in reality, all that these characters do is use long, safe pokes and a very textbook neutral game to fish for punishes and very easy hit confirms. Which is why I like to refer to these characters as Punishers, instead of this whole nebulous idea of footsies. I feel like that's much less disagreeable and gives you more of an idea of why I picked these characters if you are familiar for them. And for their placement, we're going to put them right here. The very, very top right. Why exactly? Well, I've discussed that a little bit in the What's in a Top Tier video, which again, I would really recommend that you guys watch, but if you want to learn just why they're up there, you're going to have to wait until the next video is out for that tier list segment at the end of that video. So if you want to bully me into working harder on that video and getting it out in time, just feel free to comment down below that you want to see Bootsy's characters ASAP. But for now, that's going to be all for this video, and as always, until next time, stay safe.